Hey there, good morning. Joe Dormer here from ShortPoint. Uh, I'm a senior ShortPoint consultant. I help our customers um, and clients who are evaluating ShortPoint to test ShortPoint, understand how it can work to help build and design their intranets. Um, I'm going to be leading our webinar today, Create Stunning Intranets with Classic Pages Using ShortPoint. Uh, so this is one of our, our series of webinars, but today we're going to focus on classic pages for folks that are using SharePoint 2013. SharePoint 2016, or if you're using SharePoint Online and using classic pages as well. Um, we're going to be going over the basics of getting started with SharePoint so you understand the different components and how it works. Uh, and by the end of this, you'll have a good idea of how you can use SharePoint to design an intranet, uh, take that next step and make it look really nice and engaging um, without using any kind of coding, just using the SharePoint solutions that we're going to take a look at here today. So with that, let's jump in. Um, and I will say we do have a, a q and A in the Zoom uh, meeting as well. So if you do have some questions as I'm going through here, please post those questions in the q and A. Uh, I'll try to get to them if I can during the webinar. If not, at the end of the webinar, we'll have some time for questions as well. Okay, I'm gonna go through just a couple slides to help talk about some of the different components that make up the short point solution. And then we're going to spend most of the time doing a demo, but just a couple of definitions to set, uh, set the stage here. So the first piece I want to talk about is what we call the page builder. So there's two main components of short point. One of those is the page builder. The page builder is a set of design elements that we can use to build out uh, the individual pages in our environment. So that's going to be things like, uh, slideshows and tiles and an events uh, design element. Those are the pieces to show specific content on each individual page. The other component of SharePoint is what we call the theme builder. And so the theme builder is what we're going to use to apply branding and styling to our whole site. So when we're creating these multiple pages with the page builder, there are certain common design elements that we want to be across those. So like the colors and the fonts, those branding components, the theme that we want to have be consistent uh, across those different pages, we'll set those in the theme builder here, okay? Finally, I do just want to point out that everything we're going to create, even on these classic pages, is going to be responsive. So we can take a look a little bit later on about uh, what these pages are going to look like on different devices and you'll see how the content will adjust to fit those devices whether it's a tablet or a mobile device or of course different monitors and so on. okay and with that I said we keep the slide short we're going to do that and jump right into our demo here okay so I'm jumping over now to my uh, short point demos website here so this is actually a SharePoint 2013 uh, website and everything that you see, all of these different page designs here, these were built with the short point page builder. Okay. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to first show you the building blocks of the different design elements that we use to build these pages. And then we'll actually show you how you can take these designs that we're looking at and copy them and just paste them directly into your site as well. Okay. <clears throat> So now let's jump over to my demo site, and I've just got a blank SharePoint page here. Uh, I've got a little bit of content in lists and libraries so we can show how we can show that information on our pages here. But right now we're starting with a blank page. Uh, this is SharePoint Online, but again, this design experience with these classic pages is going to be very, very similar in SharePoint 2013, 2016, or classic in 2019 as well here. Okay. So to get started, let's go ahead and edit our page. And this is going to open up just the standard SharePoint editing experience here. So we get our ribbon and all of that here. I'm going to go over to the Insert tab. And you'll see since we have SharePoint installed on this site, I've got a couple extra buttons here, this section and Insert. Now, one note just about the page that we're working on, I like to use 
this is called a wiki page. So it's just a blank page here. Um, if you're using, for example, a web part page, you'll see the different web part zones. And we can use those, but there's some extra steps. So I like to start with a wiki page. And if we go back actually to the format text here, just one other comment. With SharePoint pages, typically what we do is we use these text layouts. We use the page layouts here and adjust the layouts. But as you can see, there's a smaller set of options here. Um, and you can create your own custom layouts, but it takes a little bit of work to do that. So what we're going to do instead here is go to the insert button and first of all, add a section. So the section element is a short point element that we can use then to control the layout of this page. So I've got my section and my row. And the first thing I want to do here is on this row option, we're going to click show layouts. That then opens up our different layout options here for this row. So maybe I want to split this just into two columns here. Okay. And once we add these columns, I can also increase or decrease the layout of these columns as well. So these little arrows can just make that a little wider on the left, or we can keep them even here. Okay. And so I've added my row and split it into two columns. I can add another row and change the layout of that one, add a whole new section below and so on. I'm going to just remove these extra ones that I created here, but using the row and section, we can then create essentially any layout that we want and we can do it on the fly. We don't have to predefine that layout beforehand. It's really easy to come in here, create that layout as we're working on the page and make any adjustments if we want to change things down the road. All right. Now, inside of our row or inside of our column now, I want to go and actually add some content into this page. So we're going to come up to our insert tab again once more. And now I'm going to click the blue insert short point button. This then shows me all of the different design elements that are available with short points. So these are part of that page builder that I talked about. And these are the different design elements that were used to create the page designs we saw on the demo site just a couple minutes ago as well. Okay. So we can view all of them here, or we can look by different types. For example, we have some layout options. We have things like accordions to have expanding and collapsing content here. Um, you can put tabs if you want to use tabs to organize the information on this page. Different types of media elements, so carousels, slideshows, embedding videos here. Different types of lists, for example, a file list as it sounds like, is going to be really good for showing documents on this page. So it has some specific settings that are good for showing documents and giving you some options on how you want to present those documents on this page. Okay, let's go back to all and then I'm going to search for an element and we're going to take a look and see what it, how we add one of these to our page. So let's start and we'll add some tiles here to this page. Um, in my case, we're going to say we want to create some tiles. Uh, maybe this is our home page or our landing page, and we want to then link out with some tiles to some other department sites or department pages here. So when I click on the tiles, that opens up then the configuration options for this tiles element. Uh, first, I have our settings here, so I can control some of the main look and feel settings. We can change our, uh, the size of these tiles here. Let's make them medium. I can change the color on this. And one thing to note here is when we're looking at the colors, we're going to come back to this a little bit later on with the theme builder because this primary color, the dark light, secondary, these colors that we're seeing at the top here, those are coming from that theme builder. So if you want to use your brand colors uh, throughout this site, which you probably do, we'll go and we'll be able to update the primary color and the secondary color and so on so that they're matching your brand guidelines. And we do that through the theme builder so that then when we go to our individual elements, we can just pick from those predefined colors that you've set. Okay, so keep that in mind. We'll show you where you change those colors in just a little bit. Now you could, just to point out as well, we could enter in a hex code here, right, and put an exact color directly into this page builder element. But again, the easiest way or what I kind of recommend is the best practice 
is to set those colors through the theme builder so we can then reference them easily here and just pick from the drop down. Okay. There are some other options here. Again, these options are a little bit different um, for each element. So tiles have different options than events and slideshows and so on. But you can see here for the tiles, we have our text alignment, a couple different shape options, a couple different style options to choose from here. And I'll show you some examples of those in just a couple minutes. The next tab over is our tiles tab. So this is where I'm going to go and actually add the tiles themselves to this page. So again, our example, we're going to be adding some tiles to link out to some department sites. So I'll create uh, an IT tile here, and then I'll give it a description, IT team site, and then the link, this can be whatever URL you want. So in this case, it would be another SharePoint page or SharePoint site we would link to, but of course, if you have an HR page and you want to link out to some external systems or you know, a, a, a HR benefits, time tracking platform, any external link we can put here as well, okay, internal or external. Uh, linking options, this is going to control how this link opens. So if I wanted to open, for example, in a new window here, we can add an icon. So for the IT group, we're going to do this desktop icon. I could also, if I wanted to, put an image background for this tile or change the color here just for this tile. So uh, the first color on the settings tab was for all of our tiles, but maybe I want to have you know, five tiles with their, each their own color. We could pick from here as well. Let's add one more just so we have a couple in our example. So let's add a new tile, click the plus button there. And I'm gonna add an HR tile as well. And then for the HR tile, we're going to add a users icon, just some little people here, okay? Now, as we're working on these tiles or any of our elements, we have a preview button where we can go and see what those are gonna look like. So here are two simple tiles we've created so far. And I'll show you some more creative examples here in just a few minutes, uh, but that should give you a good idea of how easy it is to come in here and create those tiles. Now, the next tab is a really important tab to understand and concept to understand, this connect tab. What this is gonna let us do is actually connect this tiles element in this case, but may, almost all of our elements have this connect option, and we can connect then these tiles to, for example, a SharePoint list or a SharePoint library, or there's also other connections to connect to people, bring in an RSS feed or some more advanced connections with a REST API. This is gonna allow this information on the page to be a bit more dynamic and update automatically when those data sources are updated. So instead of having to come to the tiles tab and add a new one, every time you want to change something here, we could connect it again to a list or library and the updates would be driven from that list or library or again, other source that we connect to here. We're going to come back to this idea in just a little while. Uh, when we copy over a full page example, we'll have a little bit more content and we're going to connect one of our other elements uh, to some content that we have on this site here. The next tab is the visibility tab. This is gonna let me control who can see this short point element. So I can choose to make this short point element visible for a particular group or don't show for a certain group. Uh, we also have options around visibility. So if you have, for example, a large banner image that maybe looks really nice on your desktop, but it's not actually conveying a lot of information, maybe we wanna hide that on mobile, so it's not taking up quite as much room on that mobile experience. The next tab over is the advanced tab. So this is gonna let us control uh, some more granular styling options for this element. For the tiles, we have things like icon color, spacing between the tiles, text color, text size, custom height and width. So again, on the settings, we had our small, medium, large, huge, but I could also come to the advanced and set in an exact height and width if I want to. So this advanced tab, more advanced options for the styling and uh, settings there for this element, okay? Finally, there's custom CSS. This is going to let us apply our own CSS to this particular element, in this case, our tiles. Uh, 
so we try to give you lots of options to style things just using those different drop downs on the settings in advance. But we have some clients who want to take things even further, and you do have the option here to apply your own custom CSS. All right. Next thing I want to point out, so that's the basics here of uh, the tabs that we have when we open up any of these elements. And they're all going to be pretty similar, again, in terms of the tabs that we have here. The difference is just on some of those specific settings, depending on what the element is. Uh, if you're wondering what settings do I have for this particular element, we can click on this demo button in the top right corner. Okay, This is going to take me back to our demos SharePoint or demos.shortpoint.com site here. And instead of taking me to the home page with the full page layouts, now I'm going to the tiles short point page since that's the element that I was working on. So everything we see on this page, these are all created with that same tiles element we were just looking at, but just adjusting some of the different settings there. So you can see we've got some square tiles here with the slide up effect, some circle tiles that have this flip effect. These ones just get a little bigger when we hover over. Got a background image here with some pictures flipping to show team members and titles. These are using some more advanced settings with background images and color overlay to give it this kind of tinted effect, changing the different sizes to get this mosaic layout with different tiles and different sizes. Okay. And if we go down a bit further, there's also this tiles options demos area. So this just shows me what each of the different settings do that we looked at on the configuration uh, page when we were setting up our tile. So changing colors, background images, Here's those different spacing options. This is what two times or three times spacing looks like. And this is just helpful if you want to come and see what's possible without having to try and preview everything for yourself. Come here, see what you can do, and then you know apply as needed. If we go back to the top of this page, the other great thing about our demo site is that it's going to let you actually use any of these designs that you see here, use them on your page. So if you're wondering, you know, I like example one, but I don't know what settings we use to actually create that look. How do I do that? We're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to come up to the top and say, I want to allow to copy parts. Once I turn on that toggle, then I can hover over any of these examples here and we get this copy button. So I'm going to copy this first tiles example, go back to my, my SharePoint site here now. These are the tiles that we are creating manually before. So I'm going to finish adding these to this page by clicking the insert button. Here you see my tiles that I created manually. I'm going to go over to our other column now and just right click and paste the tiles that I copied from the demo site. And you can see here it copied over just the same. It looks just the same as the ones I created manually. And I can of course then open up the settings on the tiles that we copied. Okay, I see it was medium size, shape is square, styles default. I probably want to come to the tiles here. The chances we have them exactly what you want to call them on your, your site or on our demo site is uh, not, it's very low. So what we're going to do is come in here and we're going to update then the titles back to our IT, for example. And we can put in our link, right? Update this content for the actual individual tiles themselves. But when we preview this, we'll see that the styling, they look exactly the same as they did on our demo set. Okay. So let's go ahead and update that. All right. So that's the basics here of using these individual elements. Again, some of the specific settings are going to be different on other elements, but they're all going to have a really similar uh, format for updating, changing our settings, adding our items, connecting if we need to the advanced and custom CSS tabs here. Now that you understand a little bit about how the individual elements work, let's go back to our uh, demos homepage where we started earlier. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of these full pages and copy over the whole page. So again, these are just created using those same design elements like the tiles we were just looking at. I'm going to take this first example, this together intranet design here. 
and we're going to come in and I can if I want to turn on a lot of copy parts on these full page designs as well so if I turn that on here it's going to let me copy sections so if I like just this section and I like a section from another design we can mix and match those pieces as we want to and create our own designs on our site or let's say you know what this is a pretty good starting point this page is close to what we want we're going to copy this whole page here and then go back to our demo site now and I'm going to just come in here and right click and paste again now one thing to notice I'm pasting above my section so we don't want to paste inside of a section we can't paste those full pages inside of a section that's already on the page so we just went above that and pasted it here you can see now we have many different elements that are created on this page some more tiles an image carousel an icon list and so on let's go ahead and just save this page really quickly so you can see what that whole page design looks like all i did again is just copy and paste the design from our demo site all right and we can see it copied over all of those elements from the demo site now there are a couple things that are different really one main thing that's different actually and that is the colors so if we look at our colors in the tiles or in the shortcuts area here compared to the tiles colors here or the shortcuts here those colors are different and again that goes back to the idea of the theme so we have on my site a different theme different colors applied and so when we copy over the design from the demo site it's going to automatically pick up on the color palette that you've set in your theme and then use those colors okay so once you've set your colors in the theme builder if you're copying over those designs from our site it's going to automatically pick up on that change and we'll show you again in just a little bit where we can go and update these colors as well all right before we do that i want to jump back into our page let's edit this page and what we're going to do is talk a little bit more about that connect feature so i want to show you how we can connect one of these elements to a list that i already have on this site so here we've got our ticker i'm going to open up this ticker element and again it has a couple different settings we've got our title latest announcement a couple different settings here to change the size again color how fast we're scrolling through these the items right now just like we went and we added our tiles one by one to the tiles element before you can see these items in the ticker are showing up here and just to show you what this looks like we'll preview it so that's our ticker scroll through and see these different items now I want to go to the connect tab here and we're going to connect now to an announcements list that I already have on this site so I'm going to click current site is where I want to connect when I select the current site it's then going to show me all of my lists and libraries here so I've got a, a number of different lists and libraries that I've set up here I want to connect in this case though to our IT announcements and then I'm going to connect to a particular view as well so you can see here um, if you're not familiar with views views are a way of filtering or sorting the in this case announcements but the list items that are coming back uh, and displaying in this page so you can see with my view here let's connect to all items and then i'll talk a little bit more i'll go to the list and show you those different views i've set up we also can set up an items limit and so if I want to see maybe I just want to see the most recent or the top three uh, announcements from this list so over time as we add more and more announcements we're not getting 20 30 announcements scrolling through that ticker we just want to see the most recent three here and then we'll click connect okay once we connect I have a little button here I can link over to that list so I just want to show you what this looks like here um, this list is going to look a little bit different if you're using again uh, SharePoint 2013 or 2016 the classic pages everything I'm showing you for classic pages is going to be the same this is the modern list experience it's going to look a little bit different uh, right now I'm going to return to classic so we can show everything in this classic mode okay and so you can see my 
announcements here. We've got our title modified, a, a body of this announcement, an image link. I've got a big image in this one. Uh, then there's a department field that expires. So these are my different columns that we've set up for this list. And you can see one of them is this department column. So a couple of these items are tagged as IT announcements. And so what we can do then is if we go to our list, instead of doing all items, we could, for example, filter to see only those where it's IT. So that's how we use our different views. So now I only see in this view those announcements where this department field is IT. This again lets us filter the items that are going to show up in our page when we connect this list to our page element. Okay. For now, we'll go back to our all items view. The other thing we have to keep in mind here is we can connect any list or library to any of these short point design elements. And in SharePoint, one of the great things is we can add our own columns. So just like I added in this case, this department field, we can add other columns as well. And so what that means is that the short point design element, it doesn't actually know, uh, are we gonna get back just the title and modified? Are we gonna get back, uh, return other fields, other columns like this department field? And so what we need to do is we need to tell that short point ticker element that we're working on now that we've connected, which of these columns do we actually wanna show in that ticker? So the way we do that is I come back to our demo page here, I'm connected, but now I need to go back to the items. And before where we had the items listed out one by one on the left side and our plus button, now it just has one tab that says items mapping. So what I'm gonna do is come to our title here and when I go to the drop down now that's over on the right, we have this after we connect, we see here the columns that are coming back from my list. And one quick clarification there, it's actually showing me just those columns that are visible in the view that I'm connected to. So in our view, again, I can add other columns here. So for example, when we create an item in SharePoint, it also is always going to capture the created by and created date. But those columns aren't visible in my view here. And so they don't show up in this drop down. So just something to keep in mind if you create your own custom columns and you don't see them in this drop down after connecting to a list, check and make sure that that column is actually in the view that you've connected to. In this case here, we'll show the uh, title, and I'm just gonna do a little dash, and we can also then pull in, for example, the modified date. So we can put in multiple properties, multiple columns inside of one of these fields if we want. And then for our link, I'm gonna link to the item URL, so someone could click on uh, this ticker item and then see the additional properties, the additional columns uh, about that announcement. After doing this, let's go ahead and preview now. And we'll see my new announcement, 725. Testing. Okay, so just some test announcements. There's our new announcement, hello, testing, and the dates accordingly here. Okay. Now, anytime that someone comes and posts a new announcement to this list, it is going to be displayed on this page based on this connection that we've created here. Okay. So let's go ahead and update that. And we can see as well inside of the designer, the, inside of the page builder, whenever we have an element connected to a list or, or any other source here, it's gonna show up with this little connection icon. It shows me I'm connected to my IT announcements list and my all items view. Whereas these other items, when we add directly into the page, it shows the actual items listed out below. Now this is a simple connection we created using the ticker, but this same idea again can be applied to any of these different elements. So for example, down here we've got events. We could connect this events short point element to our SharePoint calendar. Our slideshow could be connected to an image library where we're posting the images 
to be pulled into this slideshow here, okay? The nice thing about this is that it lets us then have, you know, select users managing the design of our intranet, but we may not want then, uh, as a designer of this page, of this intranet, I maybe don't want someone to come to me every time they want to post a new announcement in our ticker. They don't have to come to me now as the designer and let me update the page. We can instead help delegate that control to other users to update the content. So they won't come in and actually change the page or need to know how to come in and use SortPoint to make those modifications directly here. They would just be able to go to our list, select our new announcement, and then add that item here from this form and then it will show up on the page again based on that connection. So this is a great way to establish a design, but then delegate that responsibility again to update content inside of this page. Okay. All right, so that's the basics here of this page builder. Of course, there's other elements and we didn't go into all the settings of each element. I'm not going to have time to do that today, but they're all going to work in a really similar fashion here in terms of uh, updating the design elements, the settings, and then either adding the items directly like we did with the tiles or connecting to pull in content from our site and show that on this page here. All right. Um, just a reminder, if you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, right now we're going to switch gears a little bit and go over to the theme builder, which is the other component of short point here. So I'm going to save this page. And again, the theme builder is what we're going to use to apply our branding to the whole site now. Okay. So I want to go into our site settings. Okay. And then from the site settings, we can go to the short point dashboard. This dashboard looks a little bit different depending on the version of SharePoint you're using, but they're all going to have this theme builder here. So the theme builder is what we want to take a look at now. And then again, in SharePoint Online, you'll have the option to choose classic or modern. In 2013, 2016, you'll just see classic here and we'll say customize my site. This is going to take us back to our home page here that we were just working on now. But as you can see, we've got this additional menu on the left hand side now. This is the theme builder that we're going to use to then style this whole site. So we're, we're going to look at this page in the preview and see what changes it makes uh, within this page. But if we have other pages, they will also be affected by the changes we're making now in the theme builder. Because again, this is our colors and fonts and things that we want to be consistent across all of those pages in this site. So the first thing we're gonna show here is if we go to our general settings and general layout, I wanna make this site responsive. So before I do that actually, let's see what it looks like before turning that toggle on. We'll go to the responsive option here. And you can see my content actually is trying to adjust a little bit, but we've got our left menu taking up some room here. The top menu is stretching things out as well. So we get this scroll bar on the bottom. Not a great experience here. Let's go back out one more time. And now let's turn on the responsive website. And then let's try this again. Go back to our mobile. Now, and again, these buttons are used to preview. So I clicked on my mobile to see this, this mobile experience here. Now you see we don't have the left menu or the top menu. We instead get this mobile flyout menu, which has those same links there, okay? And all of our content has adjusted then to fit this page, okay? So again, these designs will be responsive on our mobile and tablet devices. Going back to our desktop view here, we can change the layout. So if I wanted to add a little border on this page or on this site, we could do a boxed layout, which adds a border along the sides there, change the width of that and so on. There's also a frame layout, which is gonna go along the sides. 
and the top here, and we have some styling options for that as well. For now, we're just going to leave this as the full layout. Let's go back here. The next link is the elements. And within the elements, we can choose some different levels where we're going to show and hide different elements in this page. When I talk about elements now, we're talking about things like our header, menu, site info, logo, and so on. So let's try a couple of these and see what they look like. If I hide the header, it's going to hide the whole header area here. Okay. Or I could hide just the menu. I probably want that menu. We're going to leave that on. I don't really need this short point demo, though. That's our site info here. Let's hide that. And then if we wanted to as well, we could hide the side panel, so the side menu there, and make this page go full width. Um, but I'm going to do one other change here. So I'm going to also turn on this focus mode. The focus mode lets me hide the SharePoint bar at the top as well as this ribbon here, but the focus mode is special. And the reason I say it's special is when we turn on that toggle there, we get a button in the top right corner, okay? So it's hidden, the, the ribbon is hidden there, but if I need to get to that, we need those links to still be accessible. So we can click on our button here and that's gonna open things up. So I can again, get to my edit button or get to my page controls here. Okay, so it's still available, but just by default, it's going to be collapsed. Take our header all the way to the top of this page and make things a little bit cleaner in terms of the, the presentation of this page. Okay, now again, as I mentioned, we can change some of these settings to show and hide different elements at different levels within our site. What I mean by that is right now I'm under all sites, so this is being up these changes showing and hiding elements are being applied to all of the sites in this site collection here. But maybe I want to not have my side panel hidden everywhere, so I'm going to turn it back on here. And then if we go back, maybe I want just my home page to have this side panel hidden. So when I go to my other pages, maybe we still have that side panel, but for just my home page, my initial landing page, I want this side panel hidden. Okay. All right. Here's the color palette that we were talking about earlier when we looked at our color options in the drop down in the page and saw our primary color and so on. This is where we'll update that. So I'm going to come here to our primary color. And in here, let's go ahead and we'll put in a hex code for uh, this lighter color blue, sort of a teal color there. And when I update that, you can see everything that was using that primary color now is now adjusted based on this primary color that I've updated here. We can click the generate button and that generate button is gonna set all of these colors to set different shades, different variations of that same primary color. So we get darker and lighter options based on that primary color. If you have additional colors that are not based on the primary color, we can come in here to our other colors for example, here I see we've got our alternate color three that's being used in this tile I can see. Maybe I change that here to a darker green. This finance color is using our highlight color. I wanna make that a little bit easier to read. Let's make that this darker red color, okay? So that's gonna then let us update and set those secondary or other colors that are part of our branding guidelines we wanna use throughout our site. We can change this text color as well. So if we come in here, I could change that to, uh, let's do this info dark. And then we'll see our text uh, updated based on that as well here. Move to top. I'm gonna turn on this little move to top toggle here. That's going to give us a button in the bottom corner that we can click then to come back to the top of the page. We can again change those colors, maybe make this rounded here. And that again will just bring us back to the top of the page. Just a nice little UI feature you can add a lot of your users. I'm sure see that on a lot of websites they go to. Now we're bringing that uh, functionality here into your internet. Fonts and typography. We can update the fonts that we're using throughout this site. So I'm gonna first go to our base font here. 
and we'll be able to update this. So I'm going to change my base font to this Montserrat font, and we'll see that changes you know, my menu as well as all of our text here inside of the page. We also then have other types of text that we can update. So if I want to style, this is our primary menu, which is going to be this top menu here. I want to make that a little bit bigger here. So we're going to change the text size and then I'm going to make it uppercase as well there. Okay. And we can do the same kinds of things for other types of text within this page. Next option here is our header. So we want to style that whole header area a little bit. Uh, one of the things I like to do is turn on this full width header and that gives me a couple other options. Um, it's going to enable a shadow here by default to kind of separate that header a little bit. You can turn that on or off as you'd like. It also gives me this option now to turn on a floating header. So the floating header then is going to stick to the top of the page. So as we scroll down now, our header stays at the top. I could also do hide floating header on scroll. As I scroll down, that header disappears. As I start going back up, back towards that navigation, then my header comes back onto the page. Um, our header background, so we can change the color here that we're using. So let's just say, um, I'm going to do this. Uh, we'll just do our, our primary color for that, just for the time being here. So that changes the whole header background color there. Now I'm going to come back here. And instead of the header, I'm going to go down to the menus. And in the menu background and color, we can change that as well. And I just want to show the difference between the menu background color, which will set as primary dark. Menu is just this area here. Header is the full header. Makes sense when you see it, but if you don't know that there are those two options, it can trip you up a little bit. Let's also change our text color here. So we're going to make the text white so we can actually read that a little bit now. And, you know, I've got my drop downs here as well. So if I want to style those, we can do that here as well with the sub menus. I'm actually going to just say when we hover over one of those sub menu items, then we'll apply the same styling at the top level here. So now it's just when I hover, we get that same experience. Okay. All right. Uh, general layout. There's a couple other options here for this menu. I can change the alignment. Maybe I want to move that over to the right. Uh, let's change the home link style. Let's make that an icon here. So now I get a little icon there. And I'm going to change this icon. I like this one there. Uh, footer. I'm not going to go into full detail here on the footer. The basic idea is that we can actually use the same page builder elements that we use to design our page to pre-create a footer. And then we would select that here from this footer option. So we're skipping over a couple steps, but you see I've created a couple footers. If I add this footer test, then I go to the bottom, you can see this is a footer that is created with the same page builder elements, and then we're just picking it to apply it here to this site. Um, again, if you're doing a trial and want to learn more about that, reach out to me, let me know, and I can help you with that, or you can find some information on that on our demos uh, or on our, our knowledge base here. Okay. All right, um, mobile settings, just a couple quick things I want to show here. First of all, if we go to our general settings, we can turn on this fixed menu. That's going to be kind of similar to the floating header where now that menu stays in the top right corner as we scroll down this page. We have the same mobile elements options, so I can turn on or off these same options for just the mobile experience here. So you know what, maybe on mobile, I want a little bit more room here. I'm going to hide my logo. I don't need that logo here on the mobile device. Um, I also like to change the mobile menu colors. So here when we open up our mobile menu, it's nice that it has the flyout menu, but I've still just got the white background here. I like to add a little bit of color to this menu. So I'm going to change the background here to the primary dark color. And then I can actually click on this color that we've selected to open up some additional options on the mobile experience. I think it's a really nice effect here. 
to change this transparency slider. So we can see that adjusts the transparency of that menu. And then I'm gonna do white text. So now we've got our theme color that's transparent so I can kind of see my intranet still behind it. And then we've got our, our white text on top of it to make it a little bit more visible there. Okay, themes. The theme option is gonna let me save this theme uh, for this site. So if I wanted to create maybe a couple different options of themes, I could do that here and save this as a theme, give it a name, webinar one, and then save that. Okay. If I go back here and go to my custom themes now, you'll see there's a number of different themes available that I can simply click this apply button. So that can be nice if you want to show maybe a couple different, uh, a couple different options to people. You could actually create two or three different themes and toggle back and forth between them by just clicking that apply button to take a look at your different theme options there. Utilities. Couple different things here, so we can apply custom CSS or JavaScript here to this whole theme. So not just to the specific element like we looked at in the page builder settings, but now if I wanted to apply custom CSS that uh, made a modification in my header across all of these pages in this site, we could do that here. There's this import export button. This is gonna let me export this theme and apply it to another site collection. So again, the theme is scoped to the site collection, but we can easily click the copy button here to export it, go to another site collection where we want to apply the same theme and simply paste that in and then apply. And that will do all the work for you of applying that theme so you don't have to go through all of these settings options one by one and make the same changes for each site collection there. Finally, there's a custom fonts option here. So uh, if you do want to bring in your own custom font, if the font you're looking for is not available from our drop-down options, you can bring in your own custom font here, a couple different methods depending on where it's coming from, uh, and then it will be available in the drop-down in the fonts and typography section once you've uploaded that font here. Okay. All right. So. We've used now the page builder to design our page. We use the theme builder then to style the site, apply our branding to the site. Now that we've got this the way we want to, I'm gonna go ahead and click publish here. That's gonna go ahead and save my changes. So as I was working in the theme builder, other people who came to my site, they wouldn't see these changes, the colors and showing and hiding different elements and everything we did in the theme builder not visible to them until I click this publish button. Now everyone who visits my site will see this, uh, this page with the theme applied here, okay? So we're about almost 50 minutes into our webinar here, and you can see we've created a, a site now that looks very little like an out-of-the-box SharePoint experience here using the page builder to design our page and then the theme builder to style that site, change our menu options, and so on. One additional thing I like to show is oftentimes people ask me how they can reuse a page that they've created. So maybe they start with an example from our demos site, one of those page designs, but then they make some modifications and they wanna reuse that design or that template for some additional sites that they're creating. If we go to the top, uh, and into the URL bar here. I'm gonna, after our URL, go question mark, SP copy equals one. And then let's reload this page. What this is gonna do, it's actually gonna bring over the same copy bar that we have on the demo site. So I can now copy this page, copy the whole page design that I've created. And I could again go to another site or another page and simply paste that in to reuse my own design that we've created there, okay? All right, so that's it as far as the demo. Hopefully that gave you a good understanding of how you can use ShortPoint to design your sites uh, without any kind of coding. Nothing we did there required coding. It was all using the different out of the box or out of the ShortPoint box uh, settings options that we have. 
Um, I'm going to get to some of the questions now that have been coming in. Uh, feel free to keep adding those questions as we go through these here. Um, so asking about training and support. So you see there's a lot of options and asking about training and support. Um, I'm going to actually show you quickly. If we go over to the ShortPoint website, shortpoint.com here, we have a whole knowledge base that's really helpful as you're getting started. If we go to the support link here and then to our knowledge base, there's a lot of helpful articles getting started with short point page builder exercises, theme builder exercises, uh, information on the installation, more articles here about the theme builder and about the page builder. So this is a great resource for you as you're starting to work with short point. If you still have questions, you can also submit a support ticket here. So support is included uh, with the license and you are able to submit support tickets here. Um, and that leads into the next question we were getting about the licensing. Uh, that again is published right on our website here. So I just want to take a quick look at that. Shortpoint is licensed based on the number of SharePoint farms if it's on premises or uh, SharePoint tenants if you're looking at SharePoint online. It's the number of SharePoint environments. Within that environment, you can use Shortpoint on as many sites and site collections as you'd like. Um, there is then also a, a component related to the number of Shortpoint users. So as I mentioned earlier, certain users are going to design the pages using Shortpoint. Those users would require a license. A one user license is $2,998 per year, so it is an annual license, and then the cost goes up from there. And after three users, we do offer some volume discounts as well. Um, one thing to note, renewal is not required to keep your designs. What that means is if you do uh, purchase short point, you use it for a year, your license expires, everything that you've already created will actually continue to work. It will all show just the same as it did the day before when you had the active license. However, you just wouldn't be able to continue using short point at that point uh, to make changes to your sites, to your pages. So most people do end up renewing, but it's nice to know that uh, those designs aren't going to disappear if there is some lapse there. Okay. All right. Uh, other questions coming in here. Asking about the installation process. So that's going to vary a little bit depending on what environment you're using again for SharePoint 2013 or SharePoint 2016. It's going to be a farm solution that you actually install uh, to your SharePoint server. If you're using SharePoint Online or SharePoint 2019, uh, it's a solution that you upload to the app catalog and then from the app catalog, you're able to add it to the specific sites where you want to use it. So there's kind of two different approaches, again, depending on the version of SharePoint that you're using. Okay. Um, what if we want to migrate to a different version of SharePoint down the road? That's absolutely supported. So if you're using SharePoint 2013 today, for example, uh, when we create these pages, all of the designs, those are just part of the page content. So if you then migrate to SharePoint 2019 or SharePoint Online, whatever method of migration you choose, uh, when you migrate those pages, as long as you have SharePoint installed in that destination environment, it will, those page designs will be moved over and it will uh, display just as it does in your environment today. I'm asking if this video will be available to watch later. Yeah, I'm going to send out a recording to all of our attendees here. Uh, we'll, we'll get that out in the next day or two uh, with recording here. Okay. All right. So I think that's it as far as questions that we're getting right now. Um, if you do have other questions that you, you know, didn't have a chance to ask today or that you think of down the road, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, my email and phone number is here as well. 
If you haven't tried ShortPoint yet, I would recommend taking a look at our website. We offer a 15-day trial. Give it a try for yourself. Uh, during that trial, again, if you want to have a, another meeting with me, I'm happy to help you build a page or two and get started with it. Um, but again, thank you everyone for attending our webinar today and hope you learned a little bit more about ShortPoint. Have a good one.